Hey guys, my name is Blaze and welcome to episode 6 of my ongoing action RPG tutorial series. Now, before I actually get into the video, I have two announcements to make. The first one is if you're on Twitter and you guys want to find out about the other things that I'm working on, then by all means, uh, you are free to follow me on Twitter. It's uh, My Twitter handle is at BlazeArts. If you missed that or if you don't know how to spell it, it's basically at and my channel name, and that's me. Um, there is also a link in the description below. The other thing that I want to tell you guys about is I'm actually part of a game dev mentor group. I actually just recently signed up. So I'm kind of new to the idea of mentoring for games development specifically. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't know how to mentor somebody. I am a teacher after all, so I, it's more or less a private lesson. That's how mentorships work. So basically, if you've never been part of a mentor program, then what it is or how I imagine it works, or at least how I planned it, is you've got a project and you have my complete attention for a full hour. So for in that one hour or however long you book me for, we'll be working on your project and I'll be answering all of your questions that are specific to your system or whatever you're working on. Keep in mind that this, because it is a mentorship, I may have other people that I will be seeing. So um, you'll be given a time slot or we'll work out a time slot and um, make sure that you're on time for that because I might end up having to talk to somebody else and I don't want people's schedules getting mixed up. Um, and so if you guys wanna find out more, then go check out the description because that's got the link for my mentor page. Everything is uh, worked out uh, per hour and you do have to pay, but don't worry, it's not like an ongoing thing. There's no contract that you have to sign, at least I don't think so. Um, but basically if you guys have a project and you want to, I don't know, maybe you want to make it better or maybe you need some specific help for your project, then I'm here for you guys. It is casual, so it's not a contract or anything and you can cancel anytime, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so those are the two things that I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, let's get on with the actual tutorial itself. Now, what we do have right now is we have a, a collision object parent, which is the parent of basically everything in your game that you can walk into. So at this stage, walls, NPCs, enemies, uh, whatever else you can think of, they're all part of the object collision parent or the object collision hierarchy, all right? Now, what we're going to work on today is we're going to work on very basic AI, right? Very basic AI. They, they are going to have a lot of flaws in them, but you should have basic functionality, or at least it has the functionality that we need at this point. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to need is a, we're going to need two variables. So I'm going to call mine target X and I'm going to default its value to zero and I'm going to do the same thing for Y, target Y equals zero. Now basically what these two variables are going to do for us is they're going to keep track of where the target object is, hence target X and target Y. So basically how it works is we're going to have the enemy object and it's going to keep tabs on the distance between the enemy and whatever it's tracking, whether it's tracking the player, NPCs, um, bait, I guess, if you really wanted to. So that's basically how it works, or that's the premise of it. So we're defaulting these two variables here, those tracking variables to zero. And in the step event, we're actually going to update that. So here we have target X equals zero there. And target y also equals zero. Oh wait, no, this is the step event. We should be we should be updating it. We should type in instead object player because we want to keep a track of where the player is relative to the actual enemy object. So those are the two things that we're going to be 
looking at. So we need to take our target. So this is our target. The player is our target and minus our position. At the same time, we're going to do that for y. We say object uh, player dot y. That should be dot. That should be our x position minus ah, minus y there. So what does this look like exactly? Well, if we type in sh uh, show debug message, we can see what these values pop up as. And we're just going to have a look at what target x looks like, target x. Don't worry, this line, this line here is not important. I just wanna prove a point. And this will constantly update the target x value. And it will spit it in the, spit it out here in the output section below. So let's have a look at that. I haven't put it into the scene. So it looks like, make sure you put your objects into the scene. So there we go, it's there now. Now let's play the game. It should now start spitting out objects. Uh, it should start spitting out values. So you can see here, there, 64, and we move away, it goes to 128, and then we get closer, 24. If we're on the other side of that, it's 40, negative 40. Now it's only tracking Excuse me. It's only tracking the X position because that's all we've put into the string section here. But don't worry, this line is not important at all. So we can actually get rid of that. I just wanted to prove a point to help me explain it. So every step, it's going to take the object's player position minus our X, and it's going to store that as the target X. It does the same thing with Y position as well. Now we actually need it to move towards the player, but we need to make sure that we only get the sign value of that. So if you remember what sign does here in Game Maker Studio, what it does is it changes the value from whatever number it is and it returns either negative one, zero, or positive one. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm going to use a local variable here. I'm gonna type in var, underscore target with a lowercase t x equals sign target x. Now you might be wondering why have I written this extra line here when I could have done it up here. In a future video this will become clear. All right so I'm just laying some foundations right now. We're going to do the same thing for y and we're going to say var underscore target, guess that target y equals sign and target y. So again, this will return either negative one, zero or positive one, depending on the actual value. The only time where it will actually equal zero at any point will be if we are perfectly aligned with the actual object. So um, yeah, it, don't wor you don't need to worry about that right now. It's just something to be aware of. And don't worry, we'll put in things like dead zones and things like that. It, it will help, um, but not in this video, in the next one. <laughs> doing AI or doing enemies, like creating enemies in general is kind of a complex thing. Uh, but let's keep going. We're now going to update the position. So X plus equals, and we're going to use the ver the local variable version. So underscore target x. And we're going to do, do the same with y. Plus equals underscore target y. Done. So now those two are set. They're done. They're good. All good. Let's play the game now. It won't follow us. Oh, it will follow us. But you can see that the enemy just walks right over us and ignores collisions completely. Even though it is an actual child of the um, object collision, because it doesn't actually do any collision checking itself, it will just walk over anything and everything. So we don't want that. What we want to do is we're gonna put some, some very tacky, This I don't recommend you guys do this, but uh, just to cut the video short, we're gonna open up the state idle script and we're going to take our collision checking that we've done here. 
Again, in the future, in a future video, we'll clean all of this up so we use as few lines of code as possible in our game. But for now, let's lay some foundations in. Let's take our X collision. We'll copy that. I don't like copying and pasting, but something <laughs> something that uh, I want to do for this video. I do want to cover as much ground as possible. So what we're going to use again, we're going to use the lowercase version. We're just going to copy and paste that. So make sure that when you do copy it into your parent enemy script, that you copy the right line. Um, pressing control C, control V, there we go. Now I'm going to keep the sign um, functions here because what we're actually going to do, we're actually going to create our first enemy. And that's going to have a different speed value. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is do the same thing for the Y axis. I don't feel very comfortable doing this, but uh, to get my point across, I will. Uh, it's not it's not good for our learning, um, copy pasting code. That's why uh, if you feel that you can't afford it, or if you do want to try it out, um, try out try out my uh, game dev mentor program. Uh, it is casual, so if you don't like it, then you can always cancel it, and it won't hurt my feelings at all. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to account for the Y position as well. And we're just pasting, uh, we're overwriting all those uh, Y axis checks. We don't need that script open anymore, we're done. Now let's play the game and let's see what that looks like. Hopefully everything works and I haven't made any mistakes. Hopefully. So just wait for that. All right, so now it actually collides with us and it stops moving uh, when we, when it touches the player. But there's a, Bit of a major problem here. If I walk around here, basically it gets caught on stuff. The This is the, the major flaw with how it is at the moment is because we actually aren't doing any pathfinding. So because we're not doing any pathfinding, it's trying its best to keep up with us, but it can't navigate around things like obstacles. So that's something that you probably wanna take into account. Um, if you also noticed before, <coughs> Excuse me. If you also noticed before, there was like that jittery movement. Again, we're going to clean that up in the next video. But uh, basically what's happening is because it can't line itself up properly, it's trying to move left and right, but it doesn't quite make it. So uh, it keeps jittering left and right. So that's what's happening there. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to multiply it by speed. Uh, uppercase speed. But this parent object doesn't have a speed variable. What we're actually going to do is we're going to create a new object here and we're going to call it object. I'm going to use a slime sprite that I created a while back. This is way back. This is way old, this sprite. Um, and basically what we're going to do with this object slime is we're going to create its parent. We're going to set its parent as parent enemy. And the only thing that the only code for now that we're going to put in is a create event. And in the create event, what we're going to do is we're going to type in speed equals, I don't know. Let's make this character slow. So 0 0.5. Now, if I've done everything right, it should work no problem. So let's get rid of that because we don't actually need the parent object. What we need is the slime. So there he is, a little blue slime character. He's got more detail than the actual player, but uh, that's fine. We haven't started putting in the pretty graphics yet. So you can see now that he's trying to keep up with us, Well, we can very easily run away. La 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 la. And you can see that when he comes into contact, he does nothing at the moment. But at least he's not jittering around. Um, like I said, because it's it's trying to line itself up perfectly with our Y, X and Y position, that's why you get that jittery motion. But because we're moving at half a pixel, it kind of, it incidentally fixes that, but we want a proper fix. 
what we'll do in a future video is we will create um, like a dead zone. So if the actual target X is you know, at a certain value range, then we don't need to update target X at all. So that's, that's a bit of a preview for then. But you can see here that everything, all this code, we didn't have to rewrite that again. We just had to write it once and then make sure that the actual enemy is a child object of the parent enemy and it inherits all of this code. You can see here that I've only written uh, target X and target Y and I didn't actually have to write a speed variable in. The reason being because we actually only need to update this. We actually just need to feed in the speed variable. That's it. If at any point you wanted to put in like, maybe you wanted to have something like a, like a bait mechanic in your game. So the player might throw an object and all the enemies might start swarming that one object and you can sneak past. Maybe you want to do that. At that point, you will have to add in some extra code to make sure that you check those objects first before it checks for the player. But again, that's a little bit more advanced. That is way into the future. Again, more, more teasers, I guess. Um, but this is it for now. From this, you can actually expand. You can create all different types of enemies. You can have like, a, I don't know, like big monster bosses or something like that. Um, and really, everything that happens in the player, the parent object, all the children objects will inherit. But that's all for now. I've gone 15, 16 minutes. Um, in the next video, we're going to build off of this um, video here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give our object, our slime enemy some directional movement so some checks that they can make as well so that it works like they can face up down left and right and not just have the same view all over again so that's the one thing that we're going to do we're also going to do some extra cleanup to make all this a lot easier to read so that's something for you guys as well uh, so stick around for that if you have any questions or comments by all means, you can ask them. I'm more than happy to take any questions. And if you are interested in that uh, game dev mentorship, then go check out my um, mentor page. The description is on my mentor page and you can find the link for that in the description below. So that's all from me, guys. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm hungry, it's lunchtime where I am. Uh, and so I hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys.